the stabilization and mobilization of your left leg, your left hip is going to unlock many, many components to your golf swing. As I talk frequently about the leg action and how my right foot pushes off in my backswing, go check out some of my leg action content for that. The left leg is invariably the one that we all feel through strike. It's the receiver of the energy. So when I'm pulling on the golf club at the top and I'm looking to open my hips up through strike, and, and the opening up of the hips through strike is the catalyst that allows the right shoulder to move out and around, which is the conduit to making this handle arc in, back to in. And that handle track that moves around is the ingredient that then starts to make this head respond accordingly. Now, when I say respond accordingly, I mean either it creates the opportunity to hit from the inside, or the opportunity for the handle to make the club hit from the outside and hit a fade. So depending on what you try to, poor shot Stuart, got the path, didn't get the face. Depending on whether you're trying to make the path approach from the in or the path approach from the out, a lot of that can come down to the left leg. As we turn the hips more, and that's always a misleading expression, really that's coming from our opportunity to clear our left side. How we clear the left side, get the left leg longer, get the left hip out the way, will ultimately come down to the balance and poise you have through the foot that allows everything above the foot to stay in balance so that when you come to pull the club hard and move quickly, you're still able to stand there in a balanced environment to hit the golf shot. But not only the balanced environment to hit the golf shot and create the speed, it's also the balance that allows us to create the good strike on the club head. Let me show you a canny drill. Those of you that have watched enough of my content will know I'm a bit of a lunatic when it comes to making things up. And it's all from a background of understanding how we must move as humans the golf swing and the club secondary. Today I've got a couple of bits of apparatus. The first one is a BOSU ball. This is a uh, great stabiliser of your foot, your left foot in this case, and an activator of the core. The second one is a step up box. I need a bit of sturdy ground to stand on. And what I'm gonna get you to do or what I'm going to do in this demonstration is just show you how this left foot in a downswing and how we prepare it in a backswing will start to allow the arms and the trunk to move. So as I start to move my golf club back, the pitch and roll of this ball here really gives you, the viewer, the insight of how this foot is going to respond. So as I start to pull, and we go up to the top of my backswing, and as I'm going up to the top of my backswing, I'm really starting to get the load into my left foot. And as I start to pull this golf club down, you really start to see the force in which the pressure is going from the toe to the heel. The leg extension, the leg length that now pulls the hip back. Now look, we all talk about early extension, humping the ball. I've had a lot of people say that recently. It's like, I go, what are you talking about? Humping the ball. Oh, early extension. <laughs> so I don't know who's out there saying that stuff, but that's, anyway. So this early extension, this being more in forward bend, you can understand 
that the left heel and the right shoulder must play off each other. If I was to now put pressure on the toe of my foot and I had forward bend, I'd fall over. So you can't create forward bend without pressure through the heel. Pressure through the heel then pulls the hip back. As it pulls the hip back, it will then open you more up and it will now open your chest more. Now at this point, if I'm more open with my chest down through strike, and my right shoulder is more forwards than my left shoulder, and then you have the belief that the right shoulder needs to stay back, you can see you're in a world of pain and you wouldn't be able to get yourself in this spot. So the ball gives you a real opportunity to A, start to feel the load in the toe on the way back, so you'll see it dip down. Then as you start to pull on the golf club down, then you're looking to shift the pressure back into the heel. And then at that point, we're now starting to put ourselves in a position where we're now starting to use the foot to balance up the column that's sitting on top of the foot. And of course, if that foot doesn't have some good pressures going through it, and we don't have the right balance from the belt line upwards in what we're trying to do with the handle and the club head, we're gonna have a lot of conflicting, a lot of conflicting messages running through our kinetic chain that will really stop us from being able to stand there and hold ourselves in balance. The, the, the ball is just making you aware of your feet. The, the box is a bit of stability on the ground. Obviously, as I'm standing here, I mean, I could stand on one foot, be kind of hard work though. We, would, we do see 30 to 40% of the pressure still on the right foot in a through swing. So it's nice to have a bit of stability there. I'm gonna drag a ball in, I'm gonna hit one. Just swinging the golf club alone in this environment will give you a real sense of how your feet are huge players in making you able to stand up and hold some balance. So this in itself is a fantastic drill. If you wanna go nuts and you're feeling brave enough, then why not use the dosu ball and start to hit some shots and see if you can start to create some balance through your feet. It's not a drill for the faint hearted, that I can assure you, but it's certainly one that wakes up the proprioceptors in your feet to make the top of your body start to behave in a decent manner. It's a drill that I do with a lot of great players and it's certainly one that as soon as they stand back on ground, the ground actually comes alive and it makes you very aware of how you need to use your feet in your golf swing. Give that a try. Let me know how you get on and I think you'll find that's good coaching. If you're tired of paying too much for premium leather golf gloves, do head over and check out my channel sponsor, GX Golf Gloves. These gloves are trusted by elite amateurs and tour players alike. Use my code, goodcoaching, to receive 10% on your next order.